The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. From Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles, and 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, The Blow-Off. It is approximately 11 p.m., June 16th, 1947. Aaron Cortwright is watering the gravel apron of his mobile gas station at the intersection of a farm road and Highway 75, a few miles south of Glenwood, Texas. A car drives up to the pumps. Um... Yeah, howdy, folks. Howdy. Fill her up. You betcha. Hey, you got a telephone here? Yep. Over in the office there. Better try that call again, Bell. Okay. Yeah, just take me a second. Coil up this hose and I'll be right with you. Yeah, pretty night, ain't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure is. Yeah, there we are. Uh, fill her up, you see? Yeah, with special. Oh, sorry, mister. Truck busted the handle off the hand pump on the special. Uh, regular be all right? I got no choice, have I? My car's about empty. <laughs> Taking kind of a chance, weren't you? Why, what do you mean? Yeah, it's about to close up. Next station is better than 30 miles away ahead. Well, we made it. That's what counts. Look, can't you hurry it up? Oh, sure, sure, man. Hey, what's she doing in there? Hey, hey, you get away from that cash draw. Never mind her. Just hope this gun don't blow your head off. Now, shove that nozzle into the tank. You ain't getting my money. Thank you old fool. Please, you'll kill you with a hose nozzle. You blame right, I will. Yeah, that ain't me that's getting killed. Get to the car, quick. You dummy. Me? I got the dough, didn't I? What'd you go for it so soon for? I didn't get a chance to get any gas in the tank. You had plenty of time to get gas. I don't know you were going to stand there gabbing instead. Now what do we do? Try to make it through the next station. What a spot, Duke Bishop, the smart operator. Ah, shut up, will you? That don't help. I'll think of something. That's the end of the gas. How far we come? 10, 11 miles. Let's flag us a ride and get out of here. And leave the car? Wouldn't that be smart? Like leaving our calling cards pinned to that stiff back there. This buggy's ours, don't forget. Well, can't we take the license plates off and ditch them or something? Oh, why does a woman have to be so dumb? There's a motor number. You can't get rid of that. Come on, pile out. Wait a minute. I got an idea. What? Know how we'll get some gas? How? Dig us an oil well? No, no. We're going to play it smart. We're going to catch a ride back to that filling station and discover a murder. Sure appreciate the ride. Duke. Yeah? Light's still on, no cars around. Don't look like anybody's been here. Well, you can't tell. It's been over a half hour. Hey, we're in luck. It's working out just right. Nobody has been here. He's lying just like we left him. There's some gas cans, Duke. Let's pump one full and get out of we here. We can't do that. Why not? Because the guy that picked us up and dumped us out across the highway would remember us, sure. But you said we were coming back to get gas. I said we're coming back to discover a murder. We're going to act like law abiding citizens. Now, get in there. Telephone for the law. You're deliberately trying to get us burned. I'm trying to keep us out of the chair. Now, get in there on that phone quick. Here comes a couple of cars. Go on! What 
What are you doing here, mister? Well, there's a dead man here. I I think he's been shot. My wife's inside calling the police. We've already been notified. I'm Sheriff Pruitt of Glenwood. The man in that car behind me just came into town to report it. Oh, well, this is terrible, Sheriff. Uh, hold up, do you suppose? Probably. Ask your wife to step out here. Oh, sure, sure, of course. Oh, Belle, forget the telephone. The sheriff's here. What? I say the sheriff's here. Somebody else report this? Yeah, uh, this is Mrs. Bishop, Sheriff. Howdy, Howdy ma'am. Sheriff. How long you two been here? Well, just a few minutes. Uh, got here just before you did. Now, where's your car? 10, 11 miles down the line. Ran out of gas down there. You get a lift up here? Yeah. Charlie. Yeah? Charlie, is everything here just like it was when you drove in and discovered the body? Well, seems like, Sheriff, near as I can tell. Any sign of these folks around when you stopped? Nobody was around except poor Jim... Laying on his face and all that blood. Ever see these folks before? No. Can't say I ever did. Okay. Did you touch anything here, Mr. Bishop? That uh, gas hose hanging unhooked there at the pump? The body? Of course not, Sheriff. We just discovered the body and tried to notify authorities. How about you, Miss Bishop? Oh, no. Well, just the telephone. All right. You can go back inside now if you'll be more comfortable, ma'am. Oh, thank you, Sheriff. I'm afraid I am a little shaky. Uh... Look, Sheriff, this has been quite a shock to her. Couldn't we get some gas and ride back to our car so we can be on our way? I'm afraid not. I'm going to phone for the Rangers. You'll have to stay till they get here. In response to Sheriff Pruitt's call, Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. Within two hours, he had carefully gone over the available information and evidence. All right, Mr. Bishop. I guess that'll be all the questions for now. But before you and your wife leave, I'd like to have your full name and address in case we want to contact you later. Oh, glad to, Ranger. Here it is on my driver's license. John Bishop, 980 West Pamela Street, Corsicana. That's a shady rest. We we have an apartment. Well, you're headed away from Corsicana now. When will you be back? Well, I, I've got an appointment in Houston tomorrow about a job, but we'll be back home, oh, day after tomorrow. Anything we can do, Ranger, just let us know. Thanks. You've both been very helpful. Sheriff had his deputy over there get you a tin of gas. He'll run you down to your car. Oh, it's mighty nice of you, Sheriff. Glad to help out. Bye, Mr. Bishop. Bye. Bye, Ranger. Thanks again. Good night. Right decent folks, Jay. They sure seem to be. But a nasty case. Nothing to go on. Not much, apparently. But maybe we can turn something up. Got any ideas, Jay? Uh-huh. First off, I'm going to Radio Austin for the lab crew. Have them scour this place from top to bottom. <laughs> crew went over Jim Courtright's station with a fine-tooth comb. While I waited for the lab report, I spent most of the next day searching the area for someone who might have seen a car or a suspicious action near the station the night before. I drew a complete blank and went back to the sheriff's office. Hi, Sheriff. Oh, hello, Jace. Thought you were never coming back. Find anything? Nope. Nobody seems to have been traveling Highway 75 last night. Lab boys didn't hit any jackpot either. Here's their report. Just came in. Hmm. Lab figures like we did that there was quite a scuffle before the shots were fired, but it don't mean much. No. But something in this fingerprint report might. You mean those matching prints found on the telephone receiver in the cash drawer? Uh-huh. Austin didn't have any record on whoever made them, so what good does that do? The report says they were fresh. These prints don't match the ones taken from the body, so they aren't court rights. Mm. Hey, wait a minute, Sheriff. Hmm? When you arrived at court rights station, Mrs. Bishop was at the telephone, wasn't she? Yeah, she was trying to call me. Well, then she was the last person to use the phone before those prints were pulled. What do you suppose, that's her print on the phone? If it is, I'd sure like to know what its duplicate was doing on court rights cash drawer. Yeah, and Bishop said himself he was on his way down to Houston to see about a job. If he was unemployed and broke, well, that'd sure be a motive. I think we'd better run up to Corsicana tomorrow and sort of welcome Mr. and Mrs. Bishop when they get back from Houston. Late the next afternoon, Sheriff Pruitt and I rolled down a quiet Corsicana street to the address John Bishop had given us. Shady Rest turned out to be a shabby rooming house set next to a wide, weed-grown lot. I'll buy you a new Winchester if this deal pans out, Jase. Mm, let's hope it costs you, Sheriff. And you better knock again. Yes? Good afternoon, ma'am. 
This is Sheriff Pruitt of Glenwood, and I'm Ranger Pearson. Well, howdy. I'm Ethel Hastings. Miss Ethel Hastings, I'm the owner here. How do you do, Miss Hastings? I wonder if you could give us a little information. Well, maybe. What you want to know? We understand Mr. and Mrs. John Bishop are due back from Houston this afternoon. We were wondering if they've arrived yet. You mean Duke and Bell Bishop? Huh. They have not arrived, and they're not gone to. Uh, what makes you so sure? Because I evicted them, that's what. Evicted them? When? Day four yesterday morning. Well, that's the morning of the same day the court right thing took place, Jase. Yeah. Well, why were they evicted, ma'am? Well, I'm patient, and I'm long-suffering. But I'm a woman alone in this world, and I have to look out for my own interests. That pair's been living off me half the winter and all spring, and there just had to be an end to it. Now, I'm payment of rent, eh? Would you say they were broke? Well, if they wasn't, they sure had it hid good. Any idea where they were going? To perdition. I'll guarantee that the way the two of them lolled around all the time, drinking and turning down offers for honest work. Well, what I meant was, did they leave a forwarding address? No. But they'll be sending me one as soon as they locate. You can count on that. Well, you seem pretty sure, ma'am. I am. They only had one thing of any value. Beat up old trunk that they tried to sneak out to their car. The way they hollered when I locked it up for the back rent, it must be worth something. I told them they could send for it when they had my money. You mind if we look at this trunk? Well, now I don't want to do nothing wrong. But with the law with me, I guess it'd be all right, wouldn't it? I think so, Miss Hastings. Well, then come right this way with me. What uh, model rifle you want, Chase? Looks like I might be buying you one. Just be dying to look at this trunk myself. What in the world those two could have that was that valuable? Now, it's right in the storeroom here. That's it. Right there. Open her up, Sheriff. Let's right. see what's inside. Hmm. There's nothing in the trunk except something wrapped in that old shirt. Let's see what it is. Oh! oh Can you beat that? Oh! Cover it up, quick! Get it out of here! Get it out of here! Oh, now, calm yourself, ma'am. It isn't what it looks like. My it son. looks like a jug of alcohol to me with a baby in it. A baby oh. with two heads. Oh, my heart. My heart, where's my medicine? I've got to have my medicine. Now, easy, ma'am. Oh. You're all right. That's a sideshow gadget. Just a rubber doll made to oh. look like the real thing. You mean it's a fake, Chase? Sure, I've seen oh. them in theatrical supply house catalogs. All sorts and sizes. Mummies, too. Fake! Well, I might have known it. Anything that pair had to be no good. I, I suppose it don't have much value, does it, Ranger? To you? I'm afraid not. Not unless you want to join a sideshow. Sideshow? Ranger, I'll have you to know I'm a respectable woman. And you've been a very helpful one, too, Miss Hastings. Thanks. Come on, Sheriff. That bottle was the blamedest thing I ever saw, Jase. What do you suppose the bishops had it for? I bet they wish they had it now. You in the mood for a few days of traveling? Anything that'll bring us up with the bishops. Good thing we know where to start looking for them. Do we, Jase? Living in a cheap rooming house, running out of money towards spring, refusing jobs, that faked-up exhibit they tried to sneak out with them. Sheriff, you and I are going hunting for carnivals. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. It is absolutely imperative that our armed forces have an adequate reserve of blood plasma at all times. The only answer to this crisis is you, the American people, who have never failed in such an emergency. The Department of Defense urges every one of us to contribute blood plasma... Blood cannot be manufactured or cultivated. It must be given by human beings to save a life. Make an appointment right away to donate a pint of your blood. Then, know in your heart that you have saved a life. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers. And tonight's case, The Blow-Off. An authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. <laughs> Working from published carnival routes, Sheriff Pruitt and I tracked down one show after another without finding any trace of Duke Bishop and his wife. No showman's organization had ever heard of them. 
We were beginning to lose hope by the time we arrived at Rocky Pass, where a carnival company was working the annual Rocky County Fair. Golly, Jace, did you ever see such a jam? Carnivals are fun, Sheriff. That's what they're for. Well, personally, I'm about fed up with them. And it looks like we're going to draw a blank here, too. No sign of a two-headed baby. Well, we haven't checked that sideshow over there yet. Another one? Do we have to? Yeah. We're getting kind of old to me now, too. This looks like a pit layout. Is that good? Well, it'll be the likeliest place for our pair to be working one of those fake baby exhibits. If that's what they went back to. What do you mean, a pit layout, Jake? Pit shows, they call them. A lot of acts and exhibits under one top. One admission for the bunch. They use pits instead of platforms to separate the performers from the audience. <laughs> what a business. Come on, let's see if this show's got anything to interest us. Six, the whole dairy assemblage of marvels ever gathered together for the edification of mankind. Something of fascinating hey, mister. interest to any and each other. Mister! Every... You mean me, Ranger? Mind stepping down here a moment? I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Instantly, Ranger, forthwith without delay. All right, step right up to the window, folks. The little lady would be happy to take your money. It's only two bits, 25 cents, the quarter part of a dollar. Yeah. Now, ah, what can I do for you gentlemen of the law? The sheriff and I are looking for a husband and wife team. We have reason to believe we're working a show like this. Ranger, it's one of the puzzles of my long and checkered career. Why millions of the law insist upon hounding us hard-working connies? Uh, this is the first case I've ever had to investigate in the show business, mister. I hope it's the last. A commendable sentiment, Sheriff. Very commendable. The people we're looking for probably operate some kind of an exhibit of what they claim is a two-headed baby in a jar of alcohol. Yeah, uh, hopscotches. Huh? What's that? Hopscotches. Uh, not regular dyed-in-the-wool connies. Drifters that uh, keep switching from one show to another. They'd be the kind be using that ancient sucker bait. Anything like that with this show? A fake you can order out of a supply house by the dozen with this show? Absolutely not, Ranger. Uh, how about in this tent? You've got a lot of freaks. Natural phenomena, Sheriff. Wonders of nature. All right, all right. Have you got a two-headed baby in there? Eh, not even a one-headed one. But there are some husband and wife teams. Now, just step over here with me. You'll look them over for yourself. Go ahead, Sheriff. Follow him. Might as well be sure. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, right over here, Ranger. Excuse me, folks. Excuse me. Now, Sheriff, we have here Zara, the world's heaviest human body. She requires the calorie intake of ten normal adults. I'm afraid she's not the one we're looking for. Well, all right. Right over here next is her husband, the sword swallow. Oh, we're not interested in him either. Well, now, don't rush yourself, Sheriff. Don't rush. Be sure. Look, but the bishops weren't performers. They operated an exhibit. Who did you say? Duke and Bell Bishop. Now, you know him? Uh, why, no, no. The name mean anything to you? Mm, no, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, now, this gentleman over here is Serpentina, the rubber woman. Hey, wait a minute. What's that over there? Uh, where? Through that doorway, under the banner that says, See and Believe. Oh, that? Why, uh, that's the blow-off. Now, if you just Now, step don't this be in such a hurry, mister. What's a blow-off? It's, uh, well, it's an added attraction for which there's uh, an extra admission charge. Kind of a come-on, eh? I suppose you could put it that way, Sheriff. Just what is this added attraction? Kind of a shocker. A woman without a head. Alive? Uh, merely a cheap illusion, gentlemen. Well, we'll take a look just the same. Come on, Sheriff. Yeah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, this unfortunate woman sitting before you on this chair. Oh, there he is, Sheriff. The There's Bishop. Well, I'll be darned. Watch closely. Jason. That she Barker breathed. said this no-head business was an illusion. Look at them pipes and wires and stuff feeding into her neck. And she's moving. That must be Bishop's wife. Uh -huh. Don't think he's seen us yet. Come on. This little lady would die in just about 60 seconds. Hey, Bill, duck quick, the ranger. Keep clear, folks. Hold it, Bill. They're ducking out under the tent, Chase. The canvas is loose here. Out this way, Sheriff. Don't see him, Chase. There they go, Sheriff. Into the crowd, out in the midway. Come on. Hold it, Bishop. Too many people here to risk gunplay. You gotta be careful. Yeah. Watch it. He's gonna fire, Chase. Oops. They're heading for the parking lot. Yeah, I see them. We lost him, Chase. Yeah, they could hide in here all night with so many cars jammed together. Our ears are better than our eyes in a spot like this. Hear anything? Not yet. Hey, what's that? There goes a car, but it ain't the one they had. They probably stole this one, but it's them, all right. They're heading right for the fairground fence. Yeah, and they're gonna go through it. 
Over to our car, quick. The time we drive through the auto gate, they'll be long gone. We aren't driving through the auto gate either. Think you can hit that hole they made in the fence, Jace? Watch me try. Brace yourself. Oh, just like threading a needle. Keep your eyes open for him while I get on the radio. Unit 10 to KTXA. Unit 10 to KTXA. KTXA to Unit 10. Go ahead, Unit 10. Unit 10 is pursuing a green new model four-door Nash sedan southbound on Highway 285, two miles south of Rocky Pass. Car is presumed stolen. The occupants are wanted for murder. Unit 10 requests roadblocks on all possible avenues of escape from this area. Will do, Unit 10. KTXA Austin. Although he drove at top speed, the pursuit ended at a ranger roadblock 50 miles south of Rocky Pass. Units at the roadblock had not seen the described car, so we knew Duke and Bell Bishop had turned off on some tributary road before they reached the barricade. We turned back on Highway 285 to search for them. There's the farm road I was talking about up ahead, Jace. They could have taken it. Yeah, pretty sparsely settled country out west of here. Let's take a look, Sheriff. Sit tight, Jace. I'll check it. See anything, Sheriff? Well, this looks like it, Jace. Fresh tire tracks. Somebody made an awful fast turn off the highway. Direction of travel is right, too. Maybe our luck's changing, Sheriff. Let's find out. sure getting rough. Yeah, it's beginning to get dark. If we don't get lined on that pair pretty soon, Jace, they may dodge us all together. I don't think so, Sheriff. They've been giving us a bad time, and they may give us a worse one, but the department's got this whole area isolated. Before we're through, we may wish we had your trailer and our horses. Yeah, I was thinking of that, too. KTXA to Unit 10. That's us, isn't it? KTXA to Unit 10. Yeah. Unit 10 to KTXA. Go ahead. Highway Patrol Unit 402 reports contact with subject's car 11 miles west of Highway 285. Second dirt road to left, off of Farm Road 971. Subject's maintaining excessive speed on nearly impassable road. Unit 402 requests backing. We passed the second dirt road to the left yet, Sheriff? No. Wait, wait, looks like one at the bottom of this hill. Yeah. 10-4, 10-4, Unit 10, approaching turnoff to Farm Road 971 now. Relay to Unit 402, we're coming behind him. Unit 10, clear. 10-4, KDXA Austin. Hang on, Sheriff, looks like a bad turn. Yeah, the dust has settled, but you can still smell it in the air. Yeah, the highway patrol car got to be just up ahead. Yeah, and he's right behind Bishop and his wife. How's your shooting eye? Pretty tolerable, Jerry. But I could do with a little practice. You're apt to get it. Now reach my rifle out of the back seat. All right. Get a shot, Sheriff. Try for the tires. If they don't stop then, try for the best target you can get. Okay, Jace. You'll have to smell the dust in the air now. You can see it. Jace, look out. The road is dead ending. Yeah. Tracks keep right on at the brush. So are we. Oh, what are you stopping for? You see something? Look. In that little gully. The highway patrol car on its side. Watch yourself, Sheriff. Keep that rifle ready. No sign of the other car. Its tracks keep right on through the brush. Here. Give me a hand with this top door. Got to get the patrolman out of there. Let me get his feet. Easy now, Sheriff. Lift him out flat. Like he was on a stretcher. Now down on this patch of grass. Is he bad off, Jace? Yeah. Some abrasions and probably a mild concussion. You got a nasty lump on the side of his head. Glad it isn't any worse. What do we do, Jace? I'm going to radio for an ambulance to pick him up. Then we'll have to stay here and wait for it. Yeah, it's too dark to do much tracking in this brush anyway. We'll night it here. By morning, we're going to have us those horses you were wishing we'd brought along. <laughs> The highway patrolman was not seriously injured. During the night, our horses were towed into us. And by sunrise, the sheriff and I were in the saddle, working toward other mounted rangers, closing in on Duke and Bell Bishop from the opposite side. We 
found their car, and much later in the day, followed their tracks to a small, dilapidated ranch house. Whoa, whoa, Sharky. Whoa, whoa boy. Yeah, somebody's home there. Smoke's in the chimney. Yeah. But listen, Sheriff. You mean that old cow talking? Yeah. What's it sound like she's saying? She sounds like somebody forgot to milk her this morning. Yeah, would a rancher forget something like that? What are you driving at, Jase? Suppose somebody put the rancher out of commission so he couldn't take care of the cow. And a minute ago, I was ready to ride right up to that front door. Yeah, I'll leave the horses here. We'll work the rest of the way on foot. It's going to be ticklish business. If they're in there, they've probably got their hands on every gun in the house. Yeah, I got a hunch they may try to bluff it out till we actually bust in on them. You take the front door. I'll cut around to the back. Whichever way they break, then, we'll have them. We better have a signal so I know when to rush the front, Jase. Make you rush if you hear a shot or if I holler. Whichever's first. Right. Good luck. Same to you, Sheriff. We'll both need it. Approaching that house without cover or real knowledge of what lay behind the doors is the kind of work officers do only because it's part of their jobs. Death is close, and they know it. I told you to stay by those back windows. I'm just not scared. Maybe there's ranges all around us. We gotta get out of here. Yeah, maybe we better. We're not together. You take the back way. Both of you stay right where you are. Look out, Sheriff! Oh. Oh. Come on, out in front with you. No. There. What a gag you like that couple lying there in the corner. Now out on the front porch. Oh. You hit bad, Sheriff? I'm nicking the arm. Here, you. Get your arms around this porch no. post. Those cuffs will keep you out of mischief. Bishop, hold up behind that water trough. Yeah, I'll flush him out. Bishop, I'm giving you a chance. Come out from behind there with your hands up. You hear me? Come and get me, Ranger. Okay. I will. Did he give up, Chase? I'm afraid he did, Sheriff. Permanently. Duly tried in the county courts at Glenwood, Texas, Bell Bishop was found guilty as an accessory in the murder of Jim Cortright. Her sentence... Fifty years in the women's prison at Gory. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Eddie Marr, Gerald Moore, Betty Lou Gerson, Ed Begley, and Jeanette Nolan. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Tom Blackburn, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. This is Hal Gibney speaking. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Today, it's the big show with guest stars including Mary McCarty, Dane Clark, Martha Scott, Phil Foster, and your charming hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. Then join in the fun on the sparkling Phil Harris, Alice Faye show. Later, Theater Guild on the Air brings you the Broadway musical Allegro starring Jane Powell, John Lund, and Kenny Delmar. Keep tuned to the NBC Radio Network. Now entering its second quarter century as the leader in radio entertainment. Next, it's the big show. All this and Tallulah 2 on NBC.